Today's video is brought to you by Audible. Get yourself a free audiobook download that you can keep forever, as well as a free 30-day trial when you sign up using the promo code www.audibletrial.com slash projectacron426. Audible has a collection of over 180,000 titles, including many Alien and Predator titles to choose from. Something that I know quite a few other fans have noticed recently and have been commenting to me is that, that there are some very interesting similarities between two creatures of the Alien universe, both being featured but different versions of the Xenomorph. This is of course the Protomorph featured in the 2017 Alien Covenant and the clone Xenomorphs featured in 1997's Alien Resurrection. In today's video we'll be exploring why exactly there are so many similarities and why it makes so much sense. First of all, I think it will be important to break down each origin of each separate uh, take on the Xenomorph, as this is actually where the answers to our question lies. First of all, we have the cloned Xenomorphs. The clones were not a naturally occurring Xenomorph in the traditional sense of naturally occurring. No, instead they were the result of the imperfect cloning process performed by the United Systems military on Ellen Ripley's DNA, salvaged from the prison planet Fury 161, after the events of Alien 3. The initial attempts at the cloning process resulted in humans uh, creating crossbreed xenomorph hybrids that were deemed unsuccessful as there was far too much mixing of human and xenomorph DNA, and a viable xenomorph specimen could not be obtained. However, eventually after 10 years of work, as of the 8th attempt, they were able to successfully separate the DNA to an extent that two separate species formed, one almost completely human and the other almost completely xenomorph, but neither were quite pure. A xenomorph queen was able to be formed separately from another Ripley clone and able to be surgically removed from her. The USM raised the creature to adulthood and noticed through their studies of the creature's genome that it had been revealed that the queen had a small percentage of human hybrid DNA from her host Ripley, in excess of that compared to the previous true xenomorph studies. The queen first functioned normally and produced eggs as many other queens do, before mutating and growing a womb-like organ that produced a strange new, newborn xenomorph hybrid. The xenomorph that came from the previous overmorph eggs were, were quite similar to the true blue xenomorphs, however they too were at least partly hybridised with Ripley's human DNA, which caused the queen and the xenomorphs alike to carry a number of particular traits that made them separate from the true pure xenomorphs. The clones had a noticeably green hue to their skins and exoskeletons, and they appeared to have gaps in their exoskeletons where fleshy connective tissue existed as well as their exoskeleton actually being much softer and more muscular uh, looking than that of the true xenomorphs. The clones also possessed uh, much flatter ridges on their spines that sat along their lower back and continued down their tails. This gave them uh, a much better ability to travel underwater and with greater speed and efficiency. In terms of physical strength, the clones possessed around the same power of that as a regular xenomorph. Their growth and breeding times were also slightly reduced, which allowed them to quickly overwhelm the Auriga's human occupants after a small number of clones were able to escape and quickly assist their queen. Now, on the other hand, we have the Protomorph, which was a creation by the android David during his 10 years of solitude on Planet 4, otherwise known as Paradise. The Protomorph is a very specific version of the Xenomorph, however, it is not the same species as the original Big Chap the true blue xenomorph from Alien, Aliens and Alien 3. Some have come to believe incorrectly that David, whilst on Paradise, was the individual that created the xenomorph. However, if you explore the Alien Covenant novelization and David's drawings canon materials, you can find out that David merely recreated the xenomorph from designs that he had discovered in the engineer's records in the temples of Paradise. So with this information, we know that the protomorph is David's attempt to recreate the xenomorph, and in this way is a separate species. The protomorph exoskeleton, with a mixture between black and grey shades, is an extremely durable and resistant material, 
and can resist immense heat as well as being uh, impervious to basic projectile firearms. While its appearance does resemble that of a xenomorph, looking closer, there are a few major differences between the two. The protomorph exoskeleton is quite biological looking and appears to mimic muscular tissue and vine plant-like growth in certain areas, as opposed to the xenomorph's uh, natural heavy biomechanical nature. Even though these creatures' exoskeletons are quite resistant to most attacks, it seems high pressure and direct forceful sharpened blades can pierce it, as seen when the members of the Covenant mission, uh, mostly Daniel, crushed one in a hydraulic claw, and then again when she fooled the creature into impaling itself, indicating that whilst it could hold up against high velocity projectiles, it was obviously softer than the traditional Xenomorph's exoskeleton, as it could be stabbed or even crushed with relative ease. The Protomorph was stated to be able to regenerate limbs, however we never actually got to see this in action, and we don't know whether this is a trait shared by its Xenomorph brethren. The unique life cycle of the creature meant that the Protomorph matured much quicker than the classic Xenomorphs to a degree, where the Protomorph chestburster birthed the Covenant Captain Oram, and at the point of doing so, it was actually fully formed, containing arms, legs, a segmented body, and a pre-separated tail. This is in contrast to the semi-developed classical chest burster that needed time to mature after birth. The origin of these creatures is far less mysterious than that of the Xenomorphs, where the Protomorphed are a direct attempt by David to recreate the Xenomorph from the temple's illustrations and genetic research he found whilst exploring the planet between the films Prometheus and Covenant. David spent close to 10 years utilising DNA from various native creatures of Planet 4, as well as human DNA in the form of Elizabeth Shaw, mixing and splicing it with the black AI pathogen as a catalyst for the reactions. All of his research, genetic manipulation, eventually got him very close to the creature depicted in the engineer's archives. However, it was not an exact copy, and there were a few things that the protomorph had and didn't have that led it to being far inferior to the true xenomorphs. One such thing appeared to be that it was far too aggressive and had little methodical thinking. The protomorph would attack with such speed and unrelenting power that it left itself open to counterattack. Both times, the crew of the Covenant encountered the protomorph, they were able to subdue them with ease, outsmarting the creature simply because the creature had appeared to be in a deep rage and was not taking in its surroundings efficiently. After 10 years of work on his creatures, David eventually developed a successful batch of overmorphs that looked distinctly different from the classic xenomorph eggs. The facehugger of the protomorph, like the creature itself, was much slimmer and appeared to show slight muscular tissue on its surface, much like its protomorph spawn. So if you hadn't picked up on the obvious uh, clues to why these creatures are so similar in their differences to the classic Xenomorph XX121, then I will tell you now. It's the human DNA that they are spliced with. Now while most every Xenomorph we have seen on the screen so far has been the result of a human host, we need to draw a distinction. These Xenomorphs, while spawned from a human host, still possess a pure strain of the Xenomorph genome and only integrate and use very specific and controlled sections of the host's genetic traits. However, in the case of both the clones and the protomorph, this was thrown out the window as the clones were created from an impure human xenomorph hybridized strain of DNA, and the protomorph genome was actually built from the ground up using human biological materials and constructed with the DNA of various creatures. The result of both different types and methods to recreate the xenomorph genome with a large amount of human DNA is the two creatures that share uh, traits such as soft fleshy exoskeletons when compared to the XX121 xenomorph. They both also have a, a large amount of muscular fleshy ligaments and skin that covers their more sensitive internal structure. Other similarities include the fact that both of their eggs look distinctively different from the classic xenomorph, and they have more of a human biomass themed 
tissue collection compared to that of the XX121s. Both the protomorph and the clones also were actually absent of the larger dorsal support structure as a part of their spines that is commonly found on the Xenomorph XX121 that is positioned just below their skull. However, despite not having this protrusion, they do have the four dorsal tubes, which seem to be more pronounced. So essentially, this explains why the protomorph and the clone xenomorphs were so similar in their appearance and equally different to the classic Xenomorph XX121. It's basically because whilst not exactly following the same methods, these two separate creatures both originate from an attempt to recreate the Xenomorph's genome by use of large segments of human genetic information. Before I go, I just wanted to let you guys know about the merch store called Acheron's Colonial Marketplace. Here, you can pick up a variety of Acheron and Alien themed merch from three distinct product lines, including shirts, hoodies, mugs, blankets, stickers, bags, and even phone cases. So if you want to support the channel and look good doing it, pick up some Acheron merch. But what other videos would you guys like to see? If you have any ideas or have any questions you would like answered, please meet me down in the comments. If you did enjoy the video, please leave a like and go check out Project Acheron on Twitter and Discord. If you want to support me further, you can become a patron where you can get access to early and behind the scenes content, the monthly and alien day giveaways, as well as the patron only engraved set of items. I hope you guys did enjoy the video and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Until then, this is Project Acheron, signing off.